Hey. So just the other day, I posted a bundle of grunge assets and textures on my site. Now, if you're too busy to watch this tutorial and learn how to make your own grunge assets, feel free to pop over to the resource section of my website, link down below, and pick up the set. Now, I promise I won't hold back any secrets. By the end of this video, you'll be able to create all of the grunge assets that you need for your design projects. So since I'm giving away all my secrets and you won't need my bundle of grunge assets, you'll be able to create your own. The next best thing that you could do to support me would be to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And the best part is that's free. Anyway, enough of this. Let's go dive into Illustrator. Sorry, force of habit. Let's go dive into Photoshop and get started on this project. All right, here we are in Photoshop, and I'm going to jump right to the chase with this tutorial. Basically, to create a vector path out of Photoshop, all you need is a selection. So here I have a selection already, and the meat and potatoes of this tutorial is just going to be done through the path palette. So you can find that by going Window, Paths, or it's also possibly docked down here beside your Layers palette. So once you open up the path palette, you'll see that it's empty because you haven't created a path yet. And what you're going to want to do with your selection active is click in this menu in the top right corner and select Make Work Path. And a tolerance of one pixel will give you the most accurate path compared to the selection that you had made. And you can hit OK. And now you've created a set of vector paths out of this selection, and you can export this to Illustrator to fine tune it further. So to do that, what you'd want to do is go to File, Export, Paths to Illustrator. Now, if you had multiple paths created inside of this document, you would have a drop down here where you could select which path you would like to export. But in this case, it's just the work path. It's the, the most recent path active. And then if you hit OK, you're going to get your save dialog and you can navigate to somewhere on your hard, hard drive and save out this path. OK, now for the second part of the tutorial. It's opening and using the path in Illustrator. So here we are. I'm going to use the command O key command to pull up my open dialog. I'm going to select the path that we just saved and hit open. And it's going to provide you with a couple options here. Um, using artwork bounding box is fine. So you can press OK. Because generally what's going to happen is you're going to use this path somewhere else. So the artboard size doesn't really matter. And what you're going to notice is that it looks like it's blank. It looks like you don't actually have anything. But if you switch to outline mode with command Y on the keyboard, you'll see that the path actually is there. It just isn't filled. So if you select everything with command A and then give those paths a black fill just so we could see it, switch back to preview mode. When you take a look at it, you'll notice that all of the interior elements, all of that little texture, that you can see in outline mode is missing here when you're in preview mode. And that's because this needs to be converted into a compound path. So to do that, we're going to hit Command A again to select all, and then Command 8 to make a compound path. And now all of those middle sections have been knocked out of the main path, and you're left with a nice grunge element that you can use in your design work. If you'd like to modify this further, feel free. You can go in with the direct selection tool and pick up and modify areas. You can delete little bits of grit. If there's an area that you don't like, for instance, you can get quite detailed in the way that you modify this. Get it to a spot that you like. All right, now that I've covered the main technique of converting a selection into a path, I'm going to talk about how I fine tune the selections to get a result that I like and why I prefer this to using the live trace feature inside of Illustrator directly. So Photoshop to me has a lot more um, variable tools for creating and crafting your selection. So here I have this paint streak that I've created and photographed and now I'm going to turn this into a selection. To start with, obviously there's a lot of extra canvas and then there was an area of the background here that I don't need. So I'll start with the crop tool just to refine the area that I want to work on. 
And once I'm happy with that, I'll hit enter to confirm the crop. Just prevents anything extraneous from being selected inside of our selection. Now, because I'm working with black and white here, that does simplify things. So what I can do is use the, just the basic brush tool and I can start to lay down some black paint, some black ink on top of this photographic element here to fill in areas that I'm not necessarily wanting to include inside of my, um, inside of my selection. So there's an entire section here. I'm gonna increase the size of my brush by using the open and close square brackets to modify that size. And I'm gonna quickly just cover all of this up so then it won't get picked up in our selection. And then the paint that I was using was a little bit reflective. So I've ended up with a lot of highlights down here that I'd like to fill in. So I'm gonna use a smaller brush and just very quickly fill all of these details in so that they're not going to be picked up inside of my selection. I can leave some of the details because I want to have some grit, some texture in there. I don't want it to just be a flat black element. But just a quick little modification of areas like this is one of the reasons why I like to use this over Auto Trace. I find this provides me a lot more customization. Okay. So we're looking pretty good here. I could use the magic wand. So I could press W on the keyboard and that's gonna give me a pretty good selection here. I think by default, the tolerance probably would have been set to 10. And I can come in here and with the shift key, I can add to my selection and pick up something like this. But as you can see, it's quite detailed. And that's not what we wanna do because it's gonna create a very, um, very detailed vector, which will be a little bit more difficult to work with. So let's deselect this. And if we increase our tolerance to 40 or 50, this black area is going to be picked up with um, much less detail in it. The only problem with this is when you have disconnected elements, you would need to, again, hold the Shift key and try to add to your selection by using the wand to pick up an area. And if you've only got a couple splats, that might work. The other or the alternative selection method that I like to use is the color range. So if you go select color range, you're going to get this option here. And I already had black in my palette or in my color picker. So it's gone ahead and picked up black for me, but you can use this eyedropper right here and then click on your image to pick up the area that you want to select. So this works with different colors, but we're working black and white right now. So you can see when I'm selecting outside of our ink splat, we're picking up all of the areas that are white. And then if we're picking up in the middle here, we're picking up all of the areas that are black. And then this slider, your fuzziness, is going to adjust the accuracy of this selection. So when you go up to a higher number here, it's going to select more of the levels of the black, giving you a simpler selection. And when you slide down, it's going to start to become more obvious that these areas here that are not pure black are gonna show up in your selection. So for this, I'd like it to be fairly solid, just leaving little bits of grit around the outer borders, and then we're gonna hit okay. Oh, and I think I actually made a mistake there. So I'm just gonna show you that again. Um, make sure when you're doing your color range that you have invert checked or unchecked so that you're selecting the actual color that you want and not the inverse of that. Alternatively, once you get the selection, if it is inverted, you can hit Command Shift I to invert your selection and it would just give you the result that you were looking for. Okay, here's the last example I'm gonna give. I'm now working with a photographic element and I'd like to extract the grunge that's going on here that's been scratched off of this paint. So here, I'm gonna use the color range method again and I'm going to select the green for the background. And that's gonna show me here all of these areas that are not being selected. Now, I'm gonna use the invert to my advantage this time and invert it so that the selection that I'm gonna pull up is all of this area that's not showing up as green. You can add colors to the selection to um, remove an area that wasn't showing up. You get a little preview of what was going on there. And then you can hit okay. Now we've got this selection and I'm about ready to convert it to a path again. 
but there are some areas of the selection that I'm not happy with, I don't particularly care for. And we can adjust these now before we get into Illustrator by switching over to the quick mask mode and then using the brush to brush in an area that we are not happy with. So this little bit up there and this area up here, I wasn't too keen on. And then maybe even this longer piece which crops off the edge, let's cover that up. And any of these areas that are red are gonna be removed from the selection and only the areas that aren't red are going to remain selected. So let's clean that up like that and then switch back over to the regular mode. And you can see that those areas that had been selected have now been removed from the selection. So it's all of these tools that allow me to customize the selection before creating a work path that really give me that control that I prefer over the auto trace feature inside of Illustrator. Now, for those of you that are interested, I've got this grunge pack for sale up on my site. There's 80 assets in total for $5 Canadian. So I think that's a pretty good deal. It covers a lot of different topics. There's grits and textures and cracks and rips and streaks and ink circles and signage and all kinds of different bits and pieces that you can use to customize your grunge projects.